Hey, what's up, guys? It's RFNG Player, and today is the 200th special. I literally can't believe it. 200. 200 is just such an insane number. I just want to say thanks to everyone who supported me along the way. Everyone who's like rated me and shouted me out. It literally means so much. I would not be here without y'all, so thanks. Well, what I'm doing is talking about every single shiny hunting method in Sword and Shield, explaining it, talking about it, and also good things you want, want to get from the methods, and all that. It's curious because people have always asked me, oh yeah, what do I, what should I start as a first hunt maybe, or how to get into shiny hunting, what methods I should do. So it's like, alright. Because a lot of people ask me, I'm going to explain every single method. First thing I would like to talk about is this little item here called... The shiny charm. So this is, uh, basically it increases your chance to find a shiny Pokemon. The base odds are 1,000, no, 1 out of 4,096. Shiny charm reduces that to 1 in 1,365. So yeah. But this, your odds are now down to 1 365. Shiny charm, you don't have to get it, it's not a necessity. A lot of people feel like it's a necessity, like, oh, you can't get Chinese quick without it. You can. It's just random number generator, or as we like to call it, random number Ganon. <laughs> it's only, it's not necessary, but it can help you if you want it. I'm, I just get it just because I can. I kind of would like be a little quicker, but I honestly don't need it. I would, if Chinese Charm didn't exist, I wouldn't mind. So, yeah. And... <laughs> If you don't know the way you get the shiny charm, is you complete your mainland Pokedex. You don't have to complete the Isle of Armor or Crown Tundra Pokedex. I just completed them because I felt like it. You need to complete the mainland Pokedex of 400. So yeah. So yeah, that's how you get it. And then you go to the town map. You go all the way up to Churchester here. And there's like a, a building where you can go and get it. From someone. Alright, next, I want to talk about a bunch of different items you want. Main, one of your main things is Pokeballs. Pokeballs, you have to. Your Pokeball choices are important because Quick Ball is a very good Pokeball. One of the ones I highly recommend. Basically, just can just you throw it, and it's very likely to catch. If it's if it's a in this game, if it's like a stage one, even stage two, maybe. Stage 3s usually, or, or legends, don't usually get caught by a quick ball, so for those, well, obviously you have the master ball, which is obviously the best true all, it's just the ace, you literally just do it, and it's done, which is a good, and like if you're backed up in the corner, dust balls are really good, especially for like, a lot of hunts are in caves or dark, so like, they're like a lot of Pokemon that spawn in caves, so Dust Ball is really good. Then you have your Repeat Balls, which if you complete the Pokedex, is already is going to always have the Multiplier on it. There's a bunch of other ones, Ultra Balls. It's pretty much the best static one. Like, there's no conditions, it's just the best Pokeball with no conditions. Uh, then, then you have your Specific Balls. Timer Ball is also really good. I think underrated, honestly. Timer Ball... Especially with legendaries, it's really good because the battle usually will take longer because you have to set it up. You have to set up, like, hit it, paralyze, sleep it. So, Timer Ball usually is really good with legendaries. You have Die Ball, Net Ball, pretty much all these balls. Yeah, I'm saying that the best Pokeballs. Obviously, some people want to catch up things to Premier Balls, even though it's harder. They just want it just because they want it to look good. I personally don't care about my Pokeballs, so I just use the best ones. And then, those are other good items I'll talk about when I talk about my Pokemon that I use for catching. So, first thing I want to talk, first method we're going to talk about is the Bare Bones. And actually, first I want to get my team that I use for Shiny Attention. This should not be here. Excuse that. I'll probably just cut that out. <laughs> Put these away now. Okay, let me 
this over here. Put this here. No random. So this is the team I use for Shiny Hunter. Now this team is very good. It gives you pretty much everything. If you're gonna go catch, which is the first one I'm talking about, just random encountering, so I'm gonna use the lady, uh <laughs> she has an egg. Because I'm still on my Mesuda Road on Hunt. So you, you just have your encounters. Either you have your overworld now, because of overworld, or if you run around, you have the grass spawn. So basically, the bare room way is just run into things. Obviously not a shiny. Very surprising. If I do get a shiny, I'm a freak. <laughs> just run, and just keep encountering. Again, with shiny charm, it's 1 3 1 3065, which is my odds, because I do have it. Or 4096 without the charm. So very much so you can use encounter things. You can have a specific target mark, or you can just go into one area it's like, you know what, I'm just gonna encounter everything. You probably get a shiny. That's what a lot of people like to do, just go in random routes and just encounter everything and try to find something. But that's pretty much the basic way. Now, a few things to note. When you're doing this, research your Pokemon. You should do a test capture. With the low lower Pokemon, it's pretty easy, especially if you have a quick ball. Like here, but if like you're if you're in like the wild area or crown tundra where everything's like 60 then you definitely need to be more prepared or if you're doing legendaries you definitely need to be prepared so let's talk about a few things uh the hardest thing honestly i feel like I, to deal with is recoil moves now the best way is most recoil moves are normal moves which is good because you can just have a ghost type pokemon like trevenant so that they can't use it. It's just not gonna hit them. So, speaking of Trevenant, now let's explain the team I have. Trevenant here has the ability Harvest. It's a 10 in ability, so you're gonna have to uh, get it through. Advent the event the Trevenant you find in the adventures, which I'll talk about later, have Harvest, or you can use the ability patch that you can buy with Dynanite or that you get from adventures to ability patch it and yeah all right so we have lepa berry so lepa berry what does is a berry to be cons is basically when when it runs out of pp for a move you restore 10 pp of that move now what harvest does is you make make another berry after you so pretty much if it eats the leper berry you're just gonna get another one back so what you do is you use skill swap skill swap will give the ability to the opposing pokemon so that they have, have harvest, then you use trick, give it your Lepa Berry. So now it can never run out of PP, which means it will never struggle. Super important, especially with legendaries. If you're hunting in Crown Tundra the Regis or the Swords of Justice, highly recommend this because this is gonna help you not to fail. I also have Sunny Day just because it's good just to prevent some weather things, but I'll talk about that later in another good way. Glade, this is in my opinion the best false swiper just because it has hypnosis as well it's very good as well you, i have sword stance just to boost it up just so i can keep false swipe and heal pulse but again remember if they have recoil moves it's, it's false swiping is pretty sketchy so i would recommend not false swiping if it has recoil moves it's, yeah and if heal pulse in case things go wrong just to heal it up a bit, the Pokemon. Pangora. Pangora is another good false swiper. And also has the ability Scrappy, so it can hit ghost type Pokemon. So if you're hunting a ghost type. But uh, also, be careful with ghost types, because ghost types usually have recoil moves. Or, and curse. Mainly curse. Curse is a scary one, because that hit does damage to it. So be careful with ghost types still, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. The false swipe, Swords Dance. It's pretty good. Butterfree is a very good Pokemon to put things to sleep or stun them. Paralysis has the ability Compound Eyes, so it boosts its accuracy of, of Sleep Spatter and Stun Spore. It boosts it and it's not hardened just so it can hard to kill. Polyrath has the ability Damp, so that it cannot, so that Pokemon can't self destruct. So they can't use Explosion, Self Destruct, or whatever. They can't, they cannot use those damaging though they can't use the moves that kill themselves so that's very good 
Then we have last one, Altaria, Cloud9, eliminates weather effects. So like if you're hunting a Swords of Justice, let's say like Verizion, and there's hail, now you can just bring out Altaria with Cloud9. And then yeah. Yeah, let's have a bunch of just moves on it just to protect it. So that's the whole team. It's a very good team to just pretty much ensure it. There's only two really things with this setup. There's still only two things you need to worry about, all right? That's recoil moves and Parish Song. Parish Song is the real, that's like the worst move a Pokemon can have that you're hunting. Parish Song sucks. Parish Song, what it does is that if it uses it, pretty much it, that Pokemon's on the three turn clock before you can catch it. So that's really hard. Sometimes you literally just have to master ball it. It just because it's really hard and I try to recommend usually staying away from this Pokemon yeah one more thing though about catching Pokemon is that the brilliant aura can which basically makes it can have egg moves which means that some of those egg moves can be moves that can kill stuff like roly poly one of its egg moves is self-destruct or explosion whichever one that's one of its egg moves so that means that you have to if it's a brilliant one it's really hard so unless you have like Polyrath or like Damp, or unless you don't have a Pokemon with Damp, then I would recommend just staying away from those. Try not to encounter the Aura ones because if those are shiny, you could fail them. All right. Well, pretty much that's talking about the just random encountering. There's also the 500 battle method, but I don't recommend. Basically, 500 battle. I'll show you because actually I've done it twice and I regret it now. It's basically. On this counter here, just ditto. Uh, so if you battle 500s, once you hit that 500, your odds are boosted to 512, which is the Basuna, which seems good. But the catch is, it's only 3% of the time you get those, you get that. So it's very minuscule. Pretty much, if you're using Shine Charm, which is 1 of 3,000, 65, it pretty much only rounds it down to about 1,300. Around there, even higher. It's not good at all. It's terrible. You you rather just get extra encounters with that time instead of just KOing. Alright. Next method, the tried and true method. My favorite, the way I started, I think a lot of people started, honestly. Masuda the method. So Masuda the method. Let's grab a second real quick. Basically here you have your eggs. Get these eggs from the daycare, and then you put usually a foreign ditto, which are kind of hard to come by. But here, yeah, this is a foreign ditto with any Pokemon that's not also from that region. And then you breed them, and then boop. Let's put the ditto back. Today's ditto, it's Japanese. It's very good. Pretty much it makes it so- Now you can do it by like with a regular ditto and like a Pokemon that's from another region that you maybe see you got from like Wonder Trading. It's, I feel like it's sad that the GTS is no longer a thing because GTS was really such a good way to get your form Pokemon from a pseudo method. But yeah, it's good. So uh, right now my target's Rotom, which I'm still going for. It's at 1,200 as the current time I'm recording this. Maybe I've done it by the time you've seen this. I don't know. Let's put it back. Let's put this to the back. So yeah, that's it. You just put them in. You just... Now what a lot of people do, and I think I like this honestly, is they gather up a bunch of eggs and then while they're encountering Pokemon, they also hatch eggs which i think is really good and a really cool idea i feel like it's pretty good pretty much like you're double hunting so yeah you just have you just gather up a bunch of eggs and then while you're counting you also hatch it i think it's really cool and you can do it if you want to me personally i'm just trying to get this so i'm just like no nah, i'm just gonna just go and just running around pretty much the best way you just want to just keep hatch have let's say well you want to have flame body here one thing my flame body here here is my shiny colossal flame body so yeah and then you just put 
eggs in here and then while and you're just running in circles around the daycare and just wait for eggs to spawn another good help that you should get is the oval charm the oval charm is gives you more chance of eggs appearing in your nursery so that's really good so yeah so yeah you definitely want you definitely want a flame body and oval charm run around the daycare gather eggs hatch them until you get a shiny i've done it a bunch of times it's really good like a bunch of my hunts are honestly masuga from before I started streaming, I just did a lot of Masuda. So, yeah. Masuda, 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 Masuda. Literally, the only non Masudas here are the Gyarados, the Scrafty, Seismito, Ditto, Dracozole, and that's it. This is the only Masudas I have not. And everything else here is Masuda. And my second box, this is, this is not. This is a sloppy set, which I'll talk about this one later. Then, this was a sloppy set. This is from an event, and then these are my Reggies, my Pride. And then you have, this was a Masuda, Adventure, and then Adventure. So I've done a lot of Masuda, so I know I'll talk about it. So the odds are 4, 5, 12, and then with, without Shiny Charm, it's 600 something. I forgot, but yeah. Yeah, but suit is great. Really good to start, and it's always usually going to be in every single game, so it's going to be always there consistently. And pretty much all, and I think I don't think I don't see them getting rid of this method. It's always going to be there because I'm pretty sure they're always going to have reading as a thing. And yeah, you're just going to always have it. It's always gonna have access to it. And it's pretty easy. Can get tedious at times. I have taken breaks from the city just because it's tedious at times. But yeah. Next method I want to talk about is soft resetting, which you can do with the Reggies. They'll so basically static. Listen, you generalize it static encounters because there's a different ways to do these static encounters. So, like, so for the Reggies, actually, first I'm just going. Actually, uh, I have a better example. Isle of Armor. So you see, you have these usually bunch of Pokemon spawning, but there are special spawns, such as this Malamar here. This is a strong spawn. Strong spawn means it only. This is the only spawn of, hit of here, only once per day. And it can change depending on your weather. So Malamar only spawns here in this type of weather. Here, usually, Lorantis, Lorantis would could also spawn here instead of Malamar if it was sunny. So yeah, you usually want to research your softy sets now that I'm kind of So basically, what you would want to do is save your game here. Save your game. But don't do it like this. Do it before you see it. So like... Wait till it's off screen. Save your game. Yeah, don't have it be like, uh, uh, don't have it spawn yet. Just save here. Go up, encounter it. And if it's not shiny, you just reset your game. It's pretty simple, and pretty easy. Now there's different variations to static resetting. A bunch of different things you can static reset. I don't, this is my. F Second favorite besides Masuda. Well, they're tied honestly you now because I really love so soft resetting. Soft resetting. Or Masuda is my favorite, definitely. I, I think random encounters are just kind of boring. But I'll, like, I'll do them if I have to. Now. So, yeah, you see, they spawn. So, like, another good example. Here in the Lake of Outrage, there's the evolutions. Now, they spawn in different weather patterns. So, right now. It's overcast. I think that means it's maybe Leafeon, I think. 
If it was thundering, it would be Jolteon. If it was rain, it would be uh, Vaporeon. If it was hailing, Glaceon, Sandstorm, Umbreon. There's a bunch of different things. And I think it's just really unique. Now, there's different very things you can do. So let me go... Let's talk about the Regis. The Regis are a different type of it. Basically, with the Regis, I already have them. I already caught the Regis. I already shot you out to them. But basically, what you would do is you would do the pattern here. This would light up. And then you yeah, hit this, then the Regis would spawn. There's two ways you can go about it. One is the traditional soft reset. You save in front of this. Now the other one is that you run away and then you redo the pattern. Then you encounter it again. Now the thing is, uh, you can pick whatever one you want. I honestly feel like there's no right or wrong way. If you're really good and consistent at this, I would say you can do it this way. Me personally, I like soft saying. And also, it doesn't take as much focus, because like the other one, you have to really just focus on getting the patterns right. And you can mess up big time. If you mess up, like, let's say you just can't keep hitting this, like you just keep actually turning it off and on, it can waste a lot of time. So yeah, it's... You can pick whatever way you want to do it. I, I personally do uh, soft resets. Then... You have the Swords of Justice. Uh, I think I have them all unlocked. So the Swords of Justice are different. I'm trying to find it. See. Oh, here it is. Here's Verizian. So here's Verizian. If I get the shiny, I swear. So here's Verizian. So what you would do... Is you counter it. And here's a... a you know, let me give you an example. Here. About, well... I guess I could demonstrate. So you have... Skill swap. Now the swords of justice you really need to throw. Swords of justice are insanely hard. They can just keep swords dancing up and just. And here's another problem: the hail. If it's hailing, it's really hard. That's why I recommend Altario of Cloud Nine. And but luckily, Trevenant's really good because it's a. Yo, so it's hard to hit it. So yeah, now it has the Leopard Berry plus Harvest, so it cannot. Yeah. And you, sunny, so sunny day. You get rid of the hail for five turns. So five turns, you get rid of the hail. Then I switch it to delayed. First hypnosis. So it falls asleep. Then I try to weaken it. I'd be safe, I'd only do one more false swipe. Put it to that range. It's still sleeping. So now the hail comes back. So now I would switch into Altaria to eliminate the effects of weather. So I see, no buffer. And I would just start to chuck balls at it. Hope I get it. Yeah, but I'm not gonna do that because I didn't save my game. So I was just giving a demonstration of my whole setup. So if not to respawn it, what you would do. Usually you would just run away, you wouldn't do what I was doing there. You just, so that you open camp, you close camp. Boom, this one's right on top of you. And then you would just run away and repeat. 
repeat this. So you just hit run. Open camp again. Rinse and repeat. That's right. You can do that for the Sword of Justice and Verizian. So that's what you can do it for. But no. But yeah. Well, yeah. Verizian is... What? No. The Swords of Justice and Spear Tomb. That's what I meant. <laughs> I'm all over the place. So Spear Tomb. That's what you can do. That's us you can do. But if you don't know Spear Tomb, the way to get it is you have to... Talk to a bunch of people. Like here, you have to talk to a bunch of people. And then, yeah, you, you get it there. By where the Dino Tree goes. <laughs> uh, next, what you can do... Next thing I want to talk about... Since we're at Crown Tundra already... Dynamax Adventures, the hot new method. So Dynamax Adventures here, you enter the cave here. Max layer. So you hit to embark on the first. Now the first time when you enter Crown Tundra and you go into here, it will be Siku. That's the first one you encounter. So here I have saved Garatina, Lalias, and Pure. Or you can hit anything is fine and encounter any random one, but and if you find them, you can save them here. So I have Garantina, Latias, and Kirsten. Now, the important thing, Latias is a, actually a shield exclusive. I am playing on sword. So what you can do is you can play with people who have the shield exclusives, who are, who are on, or people who are on shield to give you the shield exclusive. You can give them the sword exclusives. So that's kind of just you know, a whole uniform thing. Yeah, we're going to have Kirim save. Kirim is my main hunt. But yeah, I'm doing it right now, and I have Garantina. Which I might do later. So, uh, you do the adventure. There's gonna be four Pokemon. At the end is the legendary, and there's three other random. Well, there's a bunch of different paths, but you can encounter three other Pokemon. In there. Now, and each of them has a one in one hundred chance to be shiny with charm. One in three hundred with charm. There's a big misconception that your odds are reduced to one hundred and twenty-five. When that one twenty-five now. 1 in 25 or 1 in 75 with yeah if you catch all four pokemon if you catch all four that's it's not you technically you could say 125 per adventure 175 per adventure if you catch everything you could say that but each individual pokemon is not now 120 not 1 in 25 they are not 1 in 25 they are still only 1 in 100 it's like horde hunting, where horde hunting, each of them still have the 1 in 4,000, or 1 in 3,000, no, one in, no, 1 in 1,000, where you see 5 Pokemon in hordes. They still all have the same odds, it's just, since you're seeing more, yes, you have more likely chance to get a shiny, because you're seeing more. But each individual encounter is not now increased, they are all the same. But yeah, insert. All the legendary Pokemon are here, you can hunt whichever one you want. Which is great. Also, another good tip, Fiona here, she can see it. she has ground on for me. I don't want it, but yeah. She she can offer you a bunch of different punts that you want. Also the note is that once you've completed the story, the, the three main stories, which is the Calyrex, Reggie's, and the Birds, which you can leave those three main stories of the Crown Tundra, you will now have access to Ultra Beast in here in your adventures. Next thing, fossils. Fossils, fossils, fossils. <sighs> Dra if you don't know, I have my first one I started on the channel was Dracovish. I actually was hunting it before. It's at 10k, so. <laughs> yeah, but here's fossils. So, what you want the fossils. Basically, you have your fossils. Your fossils, you can. Restore it. You can restore one by having two of each. So Fish and Drake is going to make Dracovish. Fish and Dino is going to make Arctozolt. So what you do is you would save your game. And then you would mass restore all your fossils. Then reset your game if you don't get a shiny. Keep restoring them and that's what you do. Now 
important thing to note, these are always 4096 because they are technically gift Pokemon. They are not affected by the charm. They are always a 4096 odds. So here you have Careless, <laughs> Funny, Fish, Drake. Now, if you only if you have, if you only can restore one at a time, that's still fine. If I get it here, watch. So here's Dracovich. Let's say you're only restoring one at a time, so it's not shiny. You would then let's say let's say you're only doing one per use. We say your game. I currently have two of them, like I showed you Dracozolt and Arctozolt. I'm still missing Dracovish and Arctovish. And Dracovish, I hate. I, uh, and I am going to go back to him eventually, but yeah. Since Crown Tundra, I paused him for a bit, but yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much what you do. You just restore your fossils. Important tips, uh, high-tech earbuds are really important. You can get them to show you. High-tech earbuds are really good because you can basically reduce the sound effects, which will actually make your the restoring process go faster. So you find them here in Modestoke. Talk to this guy right here. Yeah, here. You talk to him. You get the high tech earbuds. Now, what you can do is you get your options. Now, now you have three different effects sound effects. And guys, the only one you care about the sound effects. Turn the sound effects on. Now you, you see, I can't hear this. Now, what that's gonna do, I'll actually demonstrate it. So, I put my sound effects to zero. If I get it, <laughs> if I get it, it's shiny. I doubt I will be. So let's say save the game. I restore it. Look, it instantly does. Before it would go make that whole sound like this, and it would take a while. But now, you have to wait for that whole sound effect. But now, you only need to get that. It saves, and especially if you just keep mass restoring fossils, it will save you, in the long run, a lot of time. It's important. Yeah, now I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. I think Sword and Shit doesn't have, it has a lot of diverse hunts, but there's not a lot of methods. But I honestly think I like that, because methods like SOS have kind of spoiled people. Not appreciate the values of shinies because they're really quick and easy to get so yeah but if you want a quick and easy thing just do masuda but i'm glad there's honestly but there's so many like soft resetting is just so great because there's so many good hunts there's so many things you could never hunt you can hunt all sing all evolution you can hunt all the rotom forms it's really just so great and i can't wait to see what the future pokemon holds honestly it's just incredible well actually there is one last thing but me and a lot of people don't really like this because it's easy to exploit. Actually, actually, before I talk, let's talk about the fossils work. So, actually, how do you get the fossils? That's an important thing I should explain. The fossils. Actually, first we're talking about these trash raid dens. Raid dens are garbage. The only reason I use them is actually just to grind up rare candies. Well, yeah, the candies. Because people will exploit them, seed them, pretty much just to guarantee shinies in them. It's kind of honestly disgusting, and people just do it for growth. It's not really good. They took away hacked. That's a misconception. They took away hacked raids, but they didn't take away exploits. Exploits, you can still exploit these dens. And there's also an exploit you can do on them to get infinite lots. I will not. I actually used to do that, especially to grind up my fossils. But I now do everything legit. I don't like honestly exploiting the game anymore. Doing like the hate skipping thing. It actually feels kind of weird without the sound effects. I'm gonna turn the mic on. So, go here. Here, the digging bros. 
You want to talk to this one. So yeah, paying 500 watts to dig up. Now, he digs very good items, but he doesn't usually go for that long. He usually does not go for that long. See, his greatest record is 18. This one, he will dig up a lot of items, but they're not going to be high quality. Which means you won't usually get fossils. Now, important thing to note, with the fossils, now there's four fossils. I only have three of them because I already used my other ones because I already have the Zolts, which are the the birds. I already because there's bird fossils, fish, Drake, and Diamond. I already am done with my bird fossils because I already have Dracozole and Arctozole, so I don't need those anymore. I only need these. So, so Drake. And birds. I think it's Drake and birds and sword, I believe, are harder to come by. In sword. In shield, fish and dino are harder to come by, I believe. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think that's how it works. I think so. I'm pretty sure. Maybe the other way around. But I think that's actually, yeah, I think I'm right. So dino and fish are easier in, in this game. And Drake and Birds are easier in that game. And Shield. That's pretty much, I believe that is how it is. I know Drake is harder in Sword. But maybe, I don't know. I think, I think it is Drake and Bird. For that game. And then Dino and Fish are easier in this game. So yeah. So you just want to get up a bunch of Watts. Now the best way actually to get a bunch of Watts is honestly... Is digging paw. Digging paw is really good. So what he will do is he will. Here's digging paw. He was digging up watts for seven pieces of armorite ore. You get armorite ore by doing Dynamax raids in the uh, Isle of Armor. I'll do it actually right now. I say I spend seven my own. two hundred. Now sometimes he can get into a, like, a blitz phase where he digs up a bunch of them and you can get so many watts. Yeah, so here he didn't do it. But yeah, I got 26, which is still pretty good for 7. Basically, you throw wishing pieces in there, wishing pieces you can buy from watt traders. Or you can just sometimes find them on the ground. I think they cost... What's it like 5,000? Let me go check. I can check to the watch right here. Okay, so you have to throw wish pieces, or you can find Den's already up. Now, just to know, in Dynamite Ore does not appear in raids that have like events, like 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 back when there was a Zero Ore event, you couldn't get Dynamite Ore that, or ones that have Gigantamax Pokemon. But here's the watch trader. 3,000 for a wish piece. So, yeah. So basically, you can rinse and repeat this process really easy by just spending all your watts, buying a bunch of wishy pins, getting a bunch of dynamite ore, spend that dynamite ore to go to digging paw, get a pretty much get your watts back, and eventually you will get into a blitz stage where he will get you a bunch of watts, and then once you feel like you have enough watts, you can go to the digging bros and get. There's also another thing, uh, digging ma, but she's less reliable. She can spawn randomly in different places. I'm just gonna see if I can get the blitz stays. His blitz, where you just go into like a frenzy. But Digging Ma, she can get you a bunch of Armorite Ore. Like, she'll dig, like, dig up Armorite Ore, but then she'll say, Do you want to keep going? Now, if her shovel breaks, she will instead. she will You won't get anything. So, pretty much, it's kind of like a gamble with that. Which is really hard to find, so. Because she spawns randomly in different locations. Alright, let me see. I want to try to get the blitz states. On, do it. See, he digs up different things, but blitz. Come on, I want you to do the blitz. 
How many tries do I have? I have one more try left to get to do to get him to do the blitz states. Come on. Come on, Nick and Pa. Show us. Damn it. So he didn't do it. I was trying to show it off, but basically he will dig you up a bunch of us, up to like a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand even. Even more. So he can double blitz, which has happened to me once. He can double blitz and it literally will just give you so much watt. So this is the best place to get uh to grind up your watts. Uh that's it. There's also that trash exploit, which I don't recommend do which well I actually I I won't lie, I did do it when at first, but then I but I don't do it anymore. I just like grinding this legit way. And I is it faster even than doing this? I don't even say. Because honestly, this is very good. You can just keep just spending your watts. Like, how many watts do I have right now? Let me check. From spending all of them on right or I have a good amount of watts, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, 100 like, from all that armor right or I have plenty of it. I'm just spending on Wisher Pieces. I also have a bunch of Wisher Pieces. Just spend it. Keep and just literally just... It literally can grind you up, and also important things to know. Uh, pretty much, you want four star raids when you do these because four star raids give you the most armor right or five star raids do the is the exact same as four star raids, but they're harder. So four star raids is definitely the best way. And then there's also if it glows, that gives you more enchanties and blissies give you even more armor right or so that those are important. So yeah, and that's kind of it. I've covered everything. I will timestamp every single method in the description. Talking about it. Also, my whole team setup. So, yeah. That's it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks again for 200. It was literally not possible to have the support of some, like, of, of y'all and people who have raided, supported me, shouted me out. It's such an incredible journey. I hope to keep providing content. Tauros, really. on the road to 500 that's such an insane number i literally cannot imagine it yeah. so yeah hope you guys enjoy and that was a good player out